Thank you. Uh, hi, everyone. Good afternoon. It's, it's nice to see everyone here. Uh, and uh, my name is Carolina Jackson Ward. I've worked for Project Place in various roles for about 15 years. Um, and about since about two and a half years, we're part of PlanView, so uh, it's really nice because we now have multiple product lines and can actually cover more needs. <clears throat> so what we're going to talk about first are the various products that we offer from PlanView, uh, which is, of course, uh, PlanView Enterprise and True, our enterprise offerings for larger, more complex organizations with more needs for customization, more needs for strategic and financial planning uh, and follow-up. So Planning Enterprise is the PPM solution, and uh, True is for enterprise architecture, so basically portfolios of uh, IT systems. And um, then we have Project Place. Project Place is for collaborative work management. It's to make sure that your teams, once you've decided which project you should run uh, to make sure that the teams have a tool in which they can execute the best and collaborate to get the best deliverables. And then on top of that, we have InnoTask that I'm going to talk to you about today, which is uh, cloud-based PPM, Project Portfolio Management and Resource Management module that uh, can be used for a number of various things. But together as a company, we can provide any size organization, any type of team, from a small team to big complex organizations, a complete solution to manage their resources and um, get to their objectives. So what I will talk to you uh, today about is basically I'm going to give you a brief introduction and then we'll dive into the what's and how's, like what should we be doing, what are we doing, and how's it going. Um, because the reason I'm talking to you about this is in one of my roles that I've had at the company was as a product manager, and um, I was in charge of a project uh, where we renewed the portfolio tool inside Project Place, and I talked to a number of PMOs, um, portfolio managers, across Europe. And I found that in maturing PMOs or uh, early PMOs, or when you're thinking about uh, moving from individual projects to project-based organizations, there are a number of problems that people run into. Uh, so some of them are just what we're currently doing. Uh, we had one of, one of the people that I interviewed, she was called Lisa, and she had this huge Excel sheet where she tried to just keep track of all the projects that were currently ongoing. Uh, so we called this Lisa's List, uh, and it was just such a hassle for her. That's one of the problems that we want to address, is just to get an overview of what does the project landscape look like. And also, who's working in these projects? So who's working on Project X, who's working on Project Y, and to what extent? Like, if I'm the line manager, how do I know uh, what my people are spending their time on? Also, are we working on the right initiatives? Uh, is, are the initiatives supporting our strategy? And what should we be doing going forward? I mean, given the current strategy, uh, what should we be doing in the next year? And how are we utilizing our resources? We know we have resources. We hopefully know basically how many and what roles they have, but how are we utilizing them? How can we see who is underutilized and who is a potential bottleneck? Oops, sorry. Uh, and also, how do we solve the problem of visualization for our various stakeholders, everyone from the management team to external clients? Uh, how do we make sure 
that they get the information that they need when they need it so that we can have the same view of where we are and where we're going. And maybe one of the key problems that we find is that once people have a tool to solve this, it's a real hassle to keep it populated with data and keep the data updated. So if we can look at the poll place, uh, I would like to know, looking at these problems, is this something that you recognize, uh, the people who, who are here in this, listening to this webinar? Uh, just to give me a, a brief insight into whether these are things that you experience in your day-to-day -day work life. Give a couple okay, of seconds. Okay, great. The poll, the poll has been launched, so just wait for a few more votes to come in. Mm -hmm. And they're slowly building. Okay, we're going to close it. So, 16% have said yes, this describes my everyday. 79% have said yes, some of these problems. 5% have said not really, mostly under control. And no one has said not really, I don't recognize the problem at all. Great. So we have the right audience. Thank you for that. Um, so let's look at, because one of the things that causes a lot of confusion is like the concept of portfolio management or even like the, the PMO. What are they used for? So this is, you can read it yourself. This is actually the definition in Wikipedia of project portfolio management. It's the management of processes, of methods, of technologies uh, in, a, in a single source of truth, uh, which we usually call the, the PMO, where we can collect and manage both the ongoing and the proposed projects, uh, and we can slice and dice this data according to numerous key characteristics. And the objective then is to determine what resource mix do we need to have as an organization to deliver and to schedule our activities and achieve the operational and financial goals that we have, while still realizing that we do not have unlimited resources and unlimited power, uh, but rather we, we act in the real world. Um, so if we look at what Inatas gives you, just briefly uh, as an overview. We have uh, intake and demand management so that you can prioritize the, the incoming work requests and make sure that, or, or just judge how well they are aligned with the business that you have at the moment. And we're going to look into a little bit how you do that. There's also portfolio management. And we do top-down. Uh, visibility, so we first make sure that you have the strategic objectives, uh, that you have the inventory of what projects are currently running, and that we, we go through all of that with you during our implementation process to make sure that you have focus on the projects that support the strategic goals that you currently have. And then we have the project and program management, where you can manage the project schedules, uh, see all the tasks, and see all the resources in a single location, so a single point of truth for what is actually happening right now, what is the health of our projects, what is the status, uh, and then, of course, the resource management. Now, for a lot of people, this is the first hurdle they bump into when it comes to portfolio management, project portfolio management. It's understanding how do I start these projects? How are my people being used at the moment? Do I have enough people to run the vital strategic projects I need to run in the next six months, for instance? Uh, if I change, if one of my projects is delayed, how is that going to affect my staffing? And then we have the analytics, the dashboards, and the reporting. So 
having a, a project portfolio management system makes sure that you can leverage all the big data that you get in there. You get real-time analytics to measure, to manage, to track all the work. And with Inotas, you can set up custom dashboards for various sets of stakeholders, for instance. So you can have a dashboard for your project managers. You can have a separate dashboard for your steering committee, uh, and so on and so forth. But let's look at intake, uh, or project requests or demand management, or whatever you call it in your organization. What it is, is a way to capture the incoming work. This can be project requests, it can be ideas, it can be maintenance things that we just have to do, it can be new goals. How do we manage all of that? First of all, how do we capture it? Where should things happen? for it to get into that funnel? And how do we triage it? How, what kind of go governance do we need? How does that need to look? What steps should it go through? Um, and make, to make sure that the work we start is aligned to the strategy that we have. Uh, and that process can be done in, in a task. You can set up a scorecard for incoming requests where people just fill in all the KPIs, all the statistics, all the metrics that you require. You can ask them to put in more if that's not enough. You can look already here at the, the potential staffing. But most of all, you can look at the score. You can see how well is this particular request aligned to the current strategy. So you have, for instance, here, you've got the sales value. So how much impact would this project have on your sales? How well is it aligned to the business objective? So this project, for instance, is aligned to one business objective. What is the competitive value? How is it aligned to the marketing? And then and you, you have the possibility within a task to set this up in a way that suits you. And once you have the scoring there, Sorry. Uh, then you can use all these lovely charts to see, OK, which projects should I be running in the next quarter, or which projects are the highest scoring and the lowest risk, for instance. Because a fact of life is that we all live with resource constraints. So. When you look overall at uh, organizations, 61% say that they do not have enough resources to manage their project demand. And 54% uh, say that their projects are not well aligned with business goals. Uh, and this is a real problem, because we have, we have to manage this resources. Uh, this is our constraint. This is what keeps us from doing all the things, all the lovely things that we would like to do. And resources come in various categories. Um, I've done three basic categories here. It's people, money, and stuff. And stuff is a quite broad category, which contains everything from buildings to paper clips, but objects. Uh, and of, of all of these, usually people are the ones that cause us the mo most headache. Um, they're more mobile than any other resource. A house is usually there where you put it. It doesn't get lost. It doesn't quit. It doesn't go on sick leave. Uh, so it's always there, always available to. So it's, it's a resource that is easier to manage. Uh, but people, they have varying skills, they have varying hours, they have varying capacity, um, they have varying costs. Uh, money is money, uh, and, and stuff is stuff to vote. So when we talk about resource management, we largely talk about people. So there are many different ways that we can look at the people we have in an organization. We can look at their capacity, which roughly means how many hours 
are they supposed to work? Some people work at 30 hour a week, some people work at 40 hour a week. Uh, so we look at the, the capacity that they have, but we also need to look at the skills that they have. So we need to have some sort of way to, to judge when we want to staff our projects or we want to look at their resources going forward. What kind of skills do we have? What kind of skills do we need? Um, because we need to resource the projects that we want to run in the future. So we need to understand what we have in order to do uh, the resourcing for our projects. And then usually when you work in, in, project, in projects, you also have to compete with line work, with other types of work that's ongoing in the organization. So you usually have to get some sort of approval before you can use specific people inside the organization. Once you have the approval, you might want to say that, listen, this person is booked by me for X hours during so and so many months. And we also need to look at cost. How much does one person cost uh, as opposed to another person? And utilization, because uh, we need to make sure once we have resources, we have people, that they are being used to the extent that we expect them. And in some cases, we need to redistribute between our different projects. We also need to look at what department do they sit in and what geography do they belong to because it will affect how we how we gauge them against each other. Because the truth is that in business and in life, great things are never done by one person. They're always done by a team of people. So it's part of the project feasibility to make sure that you have the right staffing. Uh, with Inotas, you can request resources either by role. So you can say, for this project, I need two business analysts, uh, one project manager, and one system architect, for instance. Uh, and you can also request specific named resources. And you can go in and you can look at a, a specific resource and see if they are available for your project. You can also go in and look at a role and see is that available for this project that I want to run next quarter. <clears throat> because the truth is, when you look at people, even the nicest people have their limits and people have a tendency to overcommit. Uh, if you just ask people, are you available? for so-and-so, can you do so-and-so, people have a tendency to say yes uh, in general because we want to be help helpful and we want to contribute. But overworking people or overworked people become bottlenecks and that means that the, the flow and the speed of your execution will be affected by people having too much to do. And that's not good. So another way that you can use the resource information that you have inside Inotas is to be able to look ahead and see if we need to plan for uh, a different headcount in the future. So uh, in this screenshot you can see that, for instance, business analysts are a really tight resource going forwards. Uh, in the next one, two, three, four months, we need almost an average one more business analyst for the, the projects that we are planning uh, than what we have at the moment. So maybe it's time to start looking for another business analyst. So using this type of tool, using something like in the task, you can look at what you need to plan ahead. Uh, because staffing takes time, recruitment takes time. So it's good to know ahead of time that you're going to have to look at what kind of headcount you have. You can also do a scenario to say, okay, we have business analysts, so tight resource. So what projects do I have coming up that do not require business analysts, for instance? Maybe I can run some of those. And you can change the uh, composition of your portfolio 
look do look ahead planning so you can see are these projects feasible? What if I move one of my projects in time? Will that make it possible for me uh, given the resources that I have? So what you do then is you look at all your portfolios, uh, the ones that are in, in progress. Uh, you can break it down into to the projects that you have and then you can either shift them in time or you can choose to include or exclude them in the ongoing uh, projects. And then you immediately see what does that do to my resources. You can even get it by individual role. So what would, what it, what would it do to the um, utilization of my project managers if I shifted this project three months, for instance? Or what would it do if I excluded the cloud upgrade and included some other project uh, and see that broken, broken, broken down by resource, by role, uh, and by project? So in the workbench, you can also see exactly by person, what does it look like? So if I'm the line manager, for instance, I can go and look at all my resources and see what does their future look like. You know, uh, Margaret here, she seems to be pretty busy. Uh, maybe we need to do something. Maybe we need to either get another person or just say, listen, that's not, that's not good enough. Uh, or Deborah, even if she's only booked 90%, I know that she has. 50% of her time that she needs to spend on line work. Uh, so you can go in and look and you can even drill into an individual and see exactly what projects are they working on, uh, when is the start and end date, and how much are they supposed to give to each project. So Jeff in this case is supposed to work 50% on the archiving strategy and 46% on the infrastructure upgrade project. Because at the end of the day, this is what it's all about. You want to have a superior overview in order to enable you to make the right decisions. The right decisions given the current strategy that you have. And with Inotas, it becomes really easy look at that strategy, to look at that project landscape, and make informed decisions. So if you start from the top, you see your departments in this case. Um, so you have the IT and the um, PMO, and then you have the other departments. And inside the IT portfolio, you have the applications, development, operations, for instance. So this a portfolio hierarchy and you can see exactly how these things relate to each other. And any individual project can be part of many portfolios. Uh, so that you can make this image look exactly like the real world. Or you can see your projects on a timeline. Uh, so you see all the projects and you see their um, depend, any dependencies between projects and in this case it's uh, also showing you the current health. If you wanted you could go in and look at one of the red projects and see what metrics are there that makes this project signal red uh, and the same for the yellow and green ones. So you can go drill in straight in here, you can see who is the owner of this project, uh, what is its score and what is its priority uh, inside the organization. Because it's all interconnected, like if you tweak your portfolios or your strategic goals, given that your portfolios represent strategic goals, if you change that, that affects your project, which projects you should run and how, how you're resourcing them, so who should work on what. And what Initus gives you is the opportunity to look at the data you have from all perspectives. 
Now let's talk about visualizations. Um, it's really important. It's uh, we have the saying, a picture says more than a thousand words, and it is actually supported by science because we are hardwired to understand things, data that we consume with our eyes. About 60 to 80 percent of the input to our brain comes from the eyes alone. So beautiful, easy to read visualizations is the easiest way to communicate uh, large amounts of data. These days, data needs to be real-time. Nobody wants to make decisions on last week's data or last month's data. So to be, all, to be able to have all that data at your fingertips and be able to present it in visuals that are easy to communicate to your stakeholders around you makes such a difference. Um, I like to call this the Facebook effect. Uh, I have a lot of friends all over the world, and I don't have time to see them very often. So when I do have time to see them, I want to have done all the Facebooking already so that I know the status, I know uh, where they work, who they're married to, if they have any children, uh, what, what their pets are and what they look like. So we don't have to talk about the basic stuff. We have the basic status already, and we can talk about the important stuff when we have time to meet. And it's the same when you work with your projects, with your steering groups, with your stakeholders, with your customers. You want them to have a basic understanding already so that you have the same language, and you can focus on solving the problems and making the important decisions when you have time to see each other. Uh, another aspect of the visualizations is that it gives you control. And if you share the visualizations with your stakeholders, it gives your stakeholders a sense of control and, and a sense of engagement. It's much easier to keep them committed, keep them coming back, keep, keep them interested and understanding about your projects or your portfolio if they have the data, if they can go and consume the data themselves. So with Inotas, you have the possibility to set up dashboards that give you the data you need uh, at your fingertips. Here we have, for instance, how many request, project requests do we have at the moment, and at what gate are they at the moment. Uh, you also have an overview of capacity versus demand in, in your entire organization, so you can see how much capacity do I have and how much demand do I have over time? We have projects by type, by cost. Uh, we have the overall project health. Uh, and we can also look at, our, in this case, um, our applications by life cycle stage. And you can set up as many dashboards as you like. And they are available to share with anyone with just a quick link. But let's uh, take a look at the integration and implementation. Because being able to have all this data requires the data being in the system in the first place. And one of the main problems that we see with systems is populating data or keeping data updated, uh, installing data packs if you have installed systems. What's different with Inotas is that it has a native integration platform. And we have an integration team that really outstanding. Uh, some of the systems that we integrate with are Project Place, of course, our own work collaboration tool, uh, Microsoft Project, Jira, ServiceNow, Zendesk, Rally. Uh, and what that means is whatever tool your project managers or your project teams use to perform their project work, you would still get the data 
into InnoTurf automatically, and they don't have to go to multiple systems to update uh, what they're working on. It's also true cloud, uh, which means that all the upgrades, all the support, all the servers is done by us. Uh, and that is such a relief. You don't have to get your IT department involved to make sure you have the latest patch or the latest update. We'll take care of all of that for you. And there's also a quite extensive um, implementation program. So there's a set stage you go through where we will come to you, we will help you uh, look at your strategic goals. If you need that help, we will help you with the uh, inventory of projects that you are currently running, help you set it all up so that you're happy with getting the most value out of the tool. And then we have a follow-up after 30 days, after 60 days, after 90 days to make sure that you get as much value out of the system as you possibly can uh, as quickly as possible uh, to make you successful. So we like to say that Enotas is Project Portfolio Management for maturing organizations. So for organizations that are not already using a tool for project portfolio management who are moving into the realm of portfolio management. Uh, and it's the, we think it's an ideal solution for, for those of you who are just maybe forming your PMO or getting started with your more structured uh, way of looking at your, your portfolio projects. It has all the mainstream uh, PPM functionality that you would expect for portfolio project and resource management. You can combine it with our own collaboration tool project place, uh, in which case you, know, you have the same supplier for both, you have the same point of contact for both. You have a great uh, collaborative task management system that everyone in the organization can use. Um, you can also use it with whatever other system you have at the moment. So Inotus will give you the strategic overview, the top-down view of your project organization, and then the, the other systems that you have will do the bottom-up, the, the tactical and, and the actual execution. So you have your, in Inotus, you have your portfolio, your prioritization, you're able to do that forward thinking, that strategic thinking around what projects you should run in the future. Uh, you have your resource capacity and demand planning, which is so crucial for many organizations to make sure that we actually have the capacity to do the projects that we want and that we're also using the resources that we have in a smart way. You can do predictive analytics and planning. So what if scenarios, what if I start this project, what if I stop that one, what if this project runs over time, how does that affect the rest of my portfolio? Uh, you can look at all the dashboards, you can look at all the reporting, and importantly, you can share it with other people and you can make sure that the dashboards that you set up are right for the group of people that you're sharing it with. You can use it for any type of project, whether you work waterfall or whether you work agile or whether you work, as more and more people do, in a combination like a, a bimodal type of execution. We have apps. Uh, that's a, an integration platform and uh, I know that some of you are going to have questions about uh, your specific systems, whether or not we, we support an integration with them. What I can say is that the most commonly used systems, we have integrations. If you have specific questions, there's an email address at the end of this webinar. You can contact them and we can look into your specific tool and whether or not we have or are planning to make integrations with it. So it is important because we all hate to duplicate data. 
So uh, all in all, we at PlanView, we have the tools that you need, whether you are a major international corporation with a complex project uh, project need, uh, project organization, uh, and or if you're a small team. We have Project Place, uh, which is a product that I, I've worked with for more than 15 years, and uh, I don't know if I could do without it. I have all my work, my teamwork, my my strategic work, it, it's all done in one place and it's great for me to be able to have that. So to have that efficiency in the execution because if your projects are not well executed, it doesn't matter how well you plan them if the execution fails. So that's really important to have. Um, and then we also have InnoTAF, which is then the PPM and resource management solution that sits on top or as a standalone product that can help you get started with your project portfolio management, with your resource management, so that we can have one family of products that supports no matter how you work. So with Project Place you get the agile execution, you can facilitate leadership, you get all that collaboration and communication uh, and the document management that is so crucial for most organizations and it suits every organization from small to big. And with Innotas you get your project planning, your, your advanced master planning for your strategic projects to make sure those projects where the, the schedule is very inflexible where you, know, you need to know exactly, you need to keep your finger on the pulse at all times. You get your resource management, you get your portfolio management to make sure that what you're doing is actually what you should be doing given the objectives that you have, the strategy that you have. You get your time, budget and expense management. Well, when people are reporting time, whether they're doing that in Inotas Direct or in another integrating system, you get one view where you can see your actuals and compare them to your estimates. And you get all that reporting so that you can do all the analytics and, and all the, the presentation of the graphs and the reports that you need to be able to feel sure that you're making the right decisions. So let's go back and look at those problems that most of you recognize quite well. And we're going to look at what the solution that we propose. So the first one, what, what are we currently doing? Well, with InnoTrust you get a portfolio landscape, a project landscape that gives a quick and accurate picture of what we do and how the projects relate to both to each other and to the current strategy. And then we had who's working on what and to what extent. And there are multiple views that support this. One is the workbench, which shows for each project, uh, for each person, uh, what projects they involved with, how much they allocated. You can also look at it from a project perspective, who's working in this project and to what extent. And you can also look into the future and see next month, how does it look for this person, how does it look for that project. Are we working on the right initiatives? Is what we're doing supporting the strategy that we have? Again, the portfolio landscape gives an accurate picture of what we do and how the projects relate both to each other and to the current strategy. What should we be doing next year? Well, with a structured intake of new ideas, initiatives, uh, and goals, the analysis of that shows which projects should be started and whether or not we have the right resources uh, that we need to get them executed. How 
how we're utilizing our resources. With the resource management, uh, that will show you who has too much to do and who's ready to take on some more work in the near future. So you get a quick overview of, of uh, who's doing what and just a, a basic, you can even go in there and just look at the red, amber, green and see how's it looking. Uh, is, is it red everywhere or are we green and, and plodding along? We need visualization for various stakeholders. So what you get within the TARS is real-time data in customizable dashboards and that can be shared with anyone inside or outside the organization. How do we fill the tool with data? So we have a superior set of integration with collaboration tools like Project Place or Project Management Systems, um, HR Systems, uh, to, to make sure that the, data, that, that the data you have flows into the system and there's no need for duplication. So, Thank you so much for listening today. Uh, I believe that we're a little bit ahead of schedule. Uh, we'll have time to take some questions. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this. And if you have any questions, if you want to know more, you can go to our website, www.inotas.com. There are lots of demo films to look at, lots more information, or you can contact us um, at the email address you see on screen right now and we will be happy to provide you with answers to any, any and all questions. Thanks Carolina. We have had lots of questions come through, so first one. With the PPM marketplace becoming crowded, what makes Initas stand out from other PPM tools on the market? It's one of the things that makes Cinetas stand out is that it is true cloud. Now, cloud solutions are coming uh, on a broad basis. Inotas is market leader in that space in North America with a strong, own, strong ownership, strong backup, uh, and, and a really good place to, to grow from. Uh, we also have the, the in, a really strong set of integrations, probably the strongest on the market, to make sure that your data is collected in the most efficient way. Uh, yeah. Excellent, thank you. What are the cut cutoff factors when spreadsheets, etc., fail to support PPM? That's an excellent question. Thank you. <laughs> uh, I would say, I mean, it depends really on how much time do you have to spend on maintaining that Excel sheet rather than getting, uh, rather than having a system that where the data is populated automatically, where you have to handle the, the intake, for instance, of new initiatives. When you no longer feel in control or when you feel like too much of your time is taken up by just maintaining this one spreadsheet. Uh, or you need to involve more people. So you can't handle all of this alone. You need to share the information with more people. That Those are indication, indicators of the fact that you need something more than a spreadsheet. Great, thank you. What in your experience is best practice in terms of granu granularity? For example, days? half days or hours for resourcing, availability, and for time periods of resources required weekly or daily? Yes. Oh, this is a really interesting question, and uh, I would love to sit down and have a chat with who, whoever uh, posed that question, because it's, there are so many factors to get into that. Uh, if you, for instance, if you charge by the hour, then that's quite simple. You need that granularity. You need to have the hour. Uh, if, if you're in a different type of business, like for us, for instance, in software development, we have a fixed set 
of uh, developing resources. We look at granularity on like dates. It's enough for us to know roughly how many days. Uh, so it depends very much on what business you're in, what what level of um, e what level of, of exactness do you need to have for your financials, for instance, and how are they, uh, how are your finances affected by how many hours you do? So our software developers, whether or not they're working they will still cost us the same because they have a fixed cost per month. So that's another way of looking at what granularity you need is how precise you need to be in your finances. Will you need to hire consultants? Then maybe the consultants need to report at a different granularity than the staff that you have that are paid a monthly salary, for instance. So I would say that it, the best thing, you know, and that's another strong point of Inatas is that we have a really good way of looking at the implementation. We will come out and we will sit down and we will have these kinds of discussions with you to make sure that you get a system that gives you the most value for the time you put into the system. So it's always going to be a judgment of how much time do you put into uh, the, the having that granularity of data and how much uh, value will you get out of having the granularity. So that's an interesting conversation to have with one of our implementation consultants. Excellent, thank you. Next question. Can the software be hosted on a user's servers with no external link for updates for those companies where security requirements do not allow data to be hosted off-site? Uh, well, that's a simple answer, no. <laughs> I mean, we're, we're not with Inotas. With Plan Your Enterprise, you can have that on-premise. So that might be one of the reasons you want to look at a different uh, software solution from us, is that you can have that as a hosted uh, installation. Great, thank you. How much dedication is required out of a system administrator after go live? Is it easy to modify in a task settings once it's been configured? Yes, basically, um, it's easy to do yourself, and it's also something that we have. We have user forums that can help you with easy modifications. You don't need to have a full-time system administrator, for instance. This uh, uh, cloud solution, it's very easy to use, very user-friendly, uh, and you shouldn't expect to spend too much of your time on system administration. We, uh, we, want to, we want to do as much of that as possible for you, so you don't have to worry about it. Thank you. We follow OGC standards, such as management of portfolios, managing successful programs. How can the tool be configured to align to the terminology? Oh, well, that's a good question, and as far as I'm aware, uh, I don't think so, but send that question into the contact email, please, and I will look into that further. But I don't think, as far as I know, that you can have customized um, in the interface. It, there are different levels of customization, so that depends a little bit on what you're talking about. Like in the scoring card, for instance, you can get your custom terms in there. So it's a little bit different in different parts of the system. So um, send that in. Your portfolios can be called whatever you want. Uh, you know, a lot of it is configurable to your terminology. Some of it isn't. Great, thank you. What are some of the most common integrations you see within a TAS? For example, okay. Salesforce, Tableau, etc. Um, I would say that um, task management systems, um, ticketing systems like. Zendesk, like Project Place, uh, are the most common integrations that we see within the task. So where, where the work is actually being done, uh, that, and that will automatically update things like status and, and progress and time in some cases. Great, thank you. Can you cross-pollinate your resource allocation and percentages of time against actual timesheet input? For example, is the picture in the application happening in the real world? This provides a real-life viewpoint and higher value. 
Uh, yes, I mean there are time. There's a timesheet module in Inotas, so your resources can enter their time in Inotas directly, or it can come from one of the integrations. In which case, it will also be real-time updates in in uh, service. So you you'll always be able to see, provided that people either use you know, like their ticketing system to input time or their work management system to input time or the timesheets in Inotas. And those can be used uh, independently or together. So one project can have one and another project can have another. Thank you. Can you talk about the levels of support you give after implementation? Uh, well, we have uh, user forum where users can can ask questions and there is also uh, online support uh, by email both in North America and in Europe so during office hours there will there's email support excellent thank you and we have our last question can the data be entered directly or does it only pull from the integration platform Oh, no, no, the data can absolutely be entered directly in the system or via one of the integrations. So uh, either way, if you send us an email at the contact address, we will also send you uh, the presentation slides if anyone would like them.